Hello, I'm going to show you how to deploy Flask web app on a cloud server. Flask comes with a web server built in, but it's not, uh, not efficient and not uh, reliable for production. So we are going to install another web server gateway. We are going to install Jonicorn. And after that, we are going to create a service on our server. It will be responsible for running uh, our Junicorn. So let me show you the list uh, we're going to go through. Uh, so first, we are going to create a Python virtual environment. Then we're going to clone our repository. And then we're going to set up the Junicorn. And then we're going to set up the service. And after that, finally, we're going to set up the Nginx. So I'm going to begin by cloning the repository. I'm going to say uh, su do get oh, or let me first make um, a directory. Uh, so again, I'm going to say sudo uh, get clone. Okay, now we have cloned our repository. Now I'm going to create a virtual environment. Uh, it's going to take a second. Again, uh, let me activate the environment. I'm going to say uh, bin activate uh, sorry, source. OK, now I'm going to let me show you first the content inside the directory. I'm going to. OK, now I'm going to install um, the requirements. OK, because the requirements doesn't have the Jonicorn inside it, I'm, gonna, I'm going to install the Jonicorn manually. I'm going to say pipe3 install Jonicorn. And let me try to run the Johnny Corn server. I'm going to, or let me say G Unicorn double dash, and then I'm going to bind to the port number 5000. And the file name is Honda app, and the class name is app. OK, now we've got the Johnny Corn running. Let me take the IP and test if it works. OK, I forgot the, uh, the port, 5000. Let me confirm the port. Yes, 5000. What's happening? Yes, now we've got the Johnny Corn running. Now let's create the service. The purpose of creating the service is because, let me show you if I just close the terminal or just hit Control and C or restart our server, our web app or our Junicorn server is going to stop. So we want to create a service that will be responsible about running Junicorn in the background. And even if our server gets restarted, it will, once the server boot up, uh, the service will start our Junicorn server again. So I'm going to say sudo nano etc uh, system d system and then we're gonna call our service on the app dot service oh what happened oh my mistake let me remove this and then service okay now I'm going to copy uh, the format for the or the syntax for the configuration. I have uh, the file here. First, we're going to put the path, the working directory. Let, let me copy. First, I'm going to say, OK, let me copy the path. And here we need to provide the absolute path for, G, for the Jonicorn. Uh, it's better and actually working directory is not important because we are providing the absolute path which is much better so let me make sure the path is correct I'm gonna okay the path is correct so I'm gonna copy this and you have to note here that I'm not 
like in the previous command, I have binded the join according to the TCB IP, so we get we can test it. But here I'm binding it to a internal socket inside the Linux. So our service or our process is not exposed to the public internet. We are going to use the Nginx, which is much more secure and performant, to expose or to work like a gate that will um, like it will take the request and then forward it to our socket. It's gonna uh, work like reverse proxy. So now let me back, let me copy. And then I'm gonna go back and I'm going to say sudo nano. Let me actually go up for the command. gonna paste it now I'm gonna say as you do system control start uh, your service name and now let me check the status of our service uh, oh I forgot the CTL CTL okay we have the service running again let's confirm let's refresh Oh, yes. Yeah, I forgot. I, I actually, it, it's not supposed to be exposed to the internet. I forgot that I have binded this to internal uh, Linux socket. So I'm gonna go back and I will install the Nginx. I'm going to say sudo uh, apt install Nginx. Yes. It's going to take a second and then I'm going to modify. Let me actually go in the directory. I'm going to say CD ETC engine X sites available. Okay, now let's we're going to we will need to create a file uh, for the engine X, uh, it's going to tell engine X to be listening on a specific URL or path, uh, and then for word, I'm gonna show you. Let me say, yes, you do nano. Let's call the file uh, Honda app. And again, I'm going to copy the configuration for the engine X. As you can see here, we are telling um, engine X to forward all the requests that are coming let me copy the ip that are coming on that ip to the socket that we are binding our journey current to so i'm going to copy this and then i'm going to go back to the ec2 and then i will just paste it and then i will save now we're gonna start the system CTL, start the engine X. Engine X. Okay. Now let's try to remove the port. Okay, it's, that is because, yes, that's because I forgot to create a shortcut for the file we have created here and copied it to the sites enabled in order because once you copy or create a shortcut for this file in the sites enabled folder you're just telling the nginx to consider that file but now nginx is ignoring our file so i'm going to say lns and i will take the path for the file on the app and to sites enabled well let me remove the duplicate the slash and then enter okay permission denied I'm going to use the SU do and test okay let's confirm I'm going to show the content in the folder okay we have the file now let's restart the engine X again. I'm gonna say system CTL restart engine X. Okay, let's refresh. 
Okay, as you can see, now Nginx is forwarding all the requests it, it receiving to the socket we have uh, binded our Junicorn to. So that deployment is much more performant and secure and uh, scalable than if you just use the Flask. And now, even if you restart or uh, close the terminal or restart your server, now the service we have created will make sure to run your app. Now your app is going to be 24 hour running, unless of course you remove your server. Thank you very much and good luck with your project.